coffee. You behave, okay? Got my coffee here. Don't lick my coffee. Don't touch anything here. I'm back. Oops. Get off, naughty. Daddy's come with all the goodies. You can't eat any crisps, though. <laughs> come on, get back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good girl. Stop it. I know you like crisps, but you're not having any. No, no, no. Come on, get back, get back, get back. Okay. Hi, guys. Today, I'd like to talk to you about... Um, a subject that, um, something that maybe some of you guys may be going through with your with your parents or loved ones. It's about care homes and how you know our parents or loved ones are treated in care in care homes. And uh, I suppose on the whole, yeah, they're, they're treated okay. You know, some in some care homes, I suppose they treat them really nice. I I wouldn't know about that. I'm not saying that in all care homes are treated, you know, specifically a specific way, you know, really good or really bad. I don't know. How do I know? All I can talk about is with the experience with my dad. Maybe because it's with it's my dad, and so it's more personal to me, and I feel. Because it's my dad, I feel, you know, if I see a little thing, something a little, you know, something wrong, I might see too much into it. If you if you know what I mean, if I might be ultra sensitive because it's my dad. You know, if it was, if it, it's, it's my family, but if it was somebody else, then not that I wouldn't care, but. I wouldn't have to focus on it. Now, I probably would care if it was somebody else, if it wasn't my family anyway. I was paying at the time, and that was a lot of money, £1,100 a week. And that was, it was, 
it was my money, it was my inheritance, but I, I did do businesses every once in a while, but I didn't earn that much money. So all of the money I had was the money that I inherited when I sold the house, our house in London. So obviously, obviously this money is my dad's money, so I wasn't going to let my dad, like some people say, I think I've had a, a comment, someone saying, I wouldn't let anybody ruin me. It doesn't matter if it was my mother or father. I thought, what a bastard. <laughs> Your parents bring you up all their life, their whole lives, and then you would not let them ruin you. You know, you wouldn't spend money to keep them in in a nursing home. <sighs> well... I couldn't do that to my parents. No, because he, he was saying, I think the idea was like, you inherited that money. You could have taken that money and gone away to another country or whatever, because it's yours. And then he would have been, looked, my dad would have been looked after by the state, by the government. Can't do that. I wanted the, the best for my dad, you know, and he worked all his life, and my mum as well. And I did my bit because I'm part of a family you know um, yeah if I get ruined then I get ruined as long as I do the right thing by my parents and uh, with my mum I didn't have the chance you know because she, she wasn't in a care home she had cancer and she passed away in Sicily Two thousand and three, two thousand and four. Um. So, <clears throat> my dad was already going to care homes in uh, in London. I don't know. Maybe I am ultra sensitive. I didn't trust them. You know, they're all nice. You know, nice to be in your face. Oh, hello. But then when you leave, basically you're dealing with your, your parents or loved ones who've got, for example, dementia or some kind of problem. You're dealing with children because they can't um, fight for themselves. They can't speak up. Well, they can, but they'll forget. They'll forget, you know. So if, for example, one of your parents is is beaten, you know, or falls over that guy or that lady isn't going to be able to to say yeah it was him or they made me fall over or I fell in my pee and they left me for a few hours who the hell is going to find out no one's going to find out unless you put a, a secretly put a camera in and this is this has been done you know they secretly put cameras in uh in these places and they find out that these elderly people have been mistreated or disabled or whatever they've been mistreated by these bastard carers oh not all carers are bad yeah not all carers are bad but when they're bad they have to be like <laughs> executed <laughs> no i mean how can you take advantage of an elderly person someone who's got dementia they're like a child they're like a child like a baby you can't do that you know, they lived all their life, you know, slaved, earned their money to stay in a bloody care home for 1,000. Well, at the moment, it's uh, a lady that I know, or a friend that I know, like her parent is paying 1,500. That's a massive amount of money. <laughs> for me, that's a huge amount of money. Like, there was one lady said, she was saying it. Uh, I don't like the fact that <laughs> you're asking for buy me a coffee when YouTube pay you money. I've checked. You know my, my late, latest videos, like the successful ones, uh, each video, I think, makes about £5. Another one is £4. Another one is one fifty. Yeah, I'm making really big bucks. <laughs> big bucks, yeah? Those are the people making big bucks. £1,500 a, a week. And it's not worth it. It absolutely is not worth it. 
you know, where does the money go to? It doesn't go to the carers because they're, they're paid probably a minimum wage. It doesn't go, go for, to the food. The food is like the cheapest food that you can get, like hospital food, you know. When I went to see my dad, white bread, you can buy in Morrison's for about 40p, a whole, a whole loaf, right? A, a huge loaf. Beans, you can get the cheapest beans for about 20, 25p or 21p, a, a whole can. So that's half a can, right? That's all he ate, plus a tea, which is tap water, local tap water, cheapest milk that you can find, and the sugar's really cheap. And these things, they buy in bulk anyway, so it'll be even cheaper than you can buy on, in Morrison's. And, oh, what is it? Some really healthy food. Um, uh, custard creams. I think custard creams or rich tea, something like that. And they're the cheapest ones as well. They buy the cheapest food in bulk. So you're looking at, like, a breakfast could cost maybe maximum one pound. One pound, let's say, for breakfast. And then the same thing for dinner, maybe one pound. It can't cost more than that. Okay, let's say two pounds. So say it costs, for a whole week, it costs maybe, I don't know, uh, 21 quid, 25 quid. They're making a huge amount of money. It doesn't cost so much money to keep a place tidy. You get, you've got the cleaner, you've got carers. Okay, you need heat because the elderly need need heat. But those bastards that I went to, I was, I was spending £1,500. And every once in a while they would say, every month, well, your dad needs gel. He needs the shower gel and he needs the foam. I said, all right, okay. So I went to the local uh, Morrisons and I bought about 10 of them. That would last for a whole month. They would ask, be crying for more, more, more. Um, more soap he needs a deodorant and he needs soap I thought what the fuck am I paying for then <laughs> sorry to uh, sorry about my excuse my French but what am I paying for then they asked for shavers you know the big shavers so I bought them then they because of uh, lockdown they said oh uh, no no before lockdown they said there's a hairdresser that comes once uh, a month. Uh, could you give Salvatore some pocket money, my dad? So I used to put fifty pounds in for pocket money. Like she, they said people come round sometimes and sell something, you know. And it's all like to do with trust. You, you know, you think okay, it's only fifty pound a month or whatever. Um, but who the fuck is going to come round and and sell them? What are they going to sell them? Okay, all right, fifty pounds. And then I think once a month, oh, it's £10 for the haircut or £15 for a haircut. I thought, my dad's got a few hairs on the side. What hair is he going to cut for 10 quid? That's like daylight robbery. So then in, in lockdown, they stopped that and they said, oh, we need an electric shaver. So they can, instead of using the electric shaver here, they would shave his beard and his hair. So I bought that. I'm not saying that I'm a mug. What choice do I have? I bought that, okay? That was, cost about 70 quid. I bought that one for my dad. Because it's my dad, you know, I'm not going to say no. What else? And, you know, I used to go there when they reopened. I went there. My dad had hair all the way, like Einstein, hair, a beard and hair here. Why the fuck didn't they cut his hair? Like for two, I think must have been two two weeks or something they didn't shave him they didn't, they didn't cut his hair so if they if they're lax and they make mis not make mistakes and you know they they can't be bothered in those areas what other areas can't they be bothered in you know like if you if your loved one like peed themselves like they've got like you know the adult underwear how do you call it like nappy how do you know they don't leave them there for the whole day you don't know you're not there and there's one really Really stupid, stu I can't believe how stupid this is. My dad used to lie down, okay? Like when he couldn't get up, he, he would lie down. And they would change him maybe once a day or twice a day. God knows how many times they change him. So I used to go and see him. And I used to want, I used to like feed him my dad. And 
I thought, he's lying down. When I'm not here, how could he call for help? And so they said, oh, there's, there's, a, there's a buzzer. Like, basically, there's, there's a line, and they put it near his hand, and it could easily fall down. But whether it stays near his hand or it falls down, you know, as he's laying, lying down, how the fuck does he remember, if he's got dementia, that that buzzer is supposed to be for help? How is he going to remember? <laughs> Are they stupid? Are they dumb? Oh, yes, every once in a while someone goes there. I was sitting there, and it was about an hour before somebody came. In the night time, when my dad wasn't well and I stayed with him before he passed away, it was more than an hour... I think they're supposed to pass every hour, every two hours. I don't know, I just didn't... You know when you have a feeling? That you you can't um, put your finger on it, but there's something not right. I grew up without brothers and sisters. And so I used to play with like my hands. You know, like these are two little men. They're fighting against each other, walking around... I used to, I had to become creative, and uh, I used to play with dolls, you know, like Action Man and whatever, I used to uh, play with plasticine, or in American it's called Play-Doh, and create little figures, I didn't have that social interaction with people, but when I did, I selected friends really carefully, or at least I was really sensitive, so this ability or whatever it is, this uh, sensitivity has spilled over into everyday, normal everyday life. So when I meet people or when I see things, I'm really sensitive. I, I've got this bullshit alarm and I know uh, it's just a gut feeling. I know there's something wrong, but I can't explain what it is. I know these bastards are lying, but I don't know exactly what they're lying about but I can feel it it's not body language it's not maybe it's the eyes it's a, a vibe I, I know I know they're lying about something but I don't know what every time I went to the care home I, I you know when they when I went to see the manager as a, a blonde lady oh hi I have to speak to you about the money this this month I think I was a bit late, maybe two days. Fair enough, okay. Uh, I was a bit late, and so... And then they spoke to me about... I don't know. I, they always wanted something. Always bloody wanted something. Apart from the £1,100 I was paying every bloody week. That's 4.5... Like, 4,500 a month. You know, if I was earning an income... I wasn't even earning income. Basically, it was my, my dad's money but you know our money just going down every month at the end of it i think it was like 200k or something i don't know because i wasn't in control of the money i just said to my wife look you pay it. i didn't want to know it was too it was too difficult for me and i said look you just pay the money i knew i had enough because we sold the house in London and I put aside enough money about 200 and 200 to 250 K something like that but that's all I had left over and I said that's for my dad if he needs more then I'll have to sell this house you know and I'm willing to do that but it should be should be enough there's one cut that keeps, sorry there's one guy that keeps walking up and down he's got a tattoo and he keeps looking at our house I've got a good mind to let the dogs out and start barking at him. He's a bit suspicious. He's done that already. He's come once and he was looking in the house. And I've just seen him now. He's come a second time. He's naked. Well, not naked. He's got just shorts on and like sandals. He's got like tattoos everywhere. And he's between, he's, he's about 30, late 20s, 30. And he keeps looking at the house. Like, just curious, I suppose. But... Sorry, I've got my... My self-defense alarm on. Yeah, 
weird. Yeah, but anyway, there was a a, a lady there. She's a a, ca a carer, a head carer. She's a Filipino woman, and this woman is still there, and she was like, I don't know, a horrible bloody woman. You know, I don't, I don't, it, it, when I think about her, I think, uh, who do you think you're, uh, you're lying to? I can see through you. I can see that you're a liar and you're a evil woman. She was all nice in front of people, but the way she used to look at people, um, she had that vibe, you know, maybe Asians, you know, or definitely, you know, Chinese, but not all Chinese, but I've seen this before. Once they get a position, a certain position, they are super snobby. They think they're above it all. They're all, you know, they think they're better than everybody else. And that is what happens. In China, I've seen this. It's as clear as daylight. As clear as daylight, they just change from this to this. Like 180 degrees and I think this is what happened to this lady she's a head carer and she controls the drug the medicine and everything and like when she when we went in in there as clients patients you know the the, the clients basically people who pay her she was still like uh like you know like um like the head nurse or something you know Anyway, it's not a problem that I didn't like her. I didn't like her because of the way she acted. When my dad passed away, no, if, when my, yeah, let me just go back a little bit. I went to see my dad and he wasn't feeling well the last few days. I can see just after taking the, uh, the bloody, yeah, the third one anyway of the medicine, the monkey juice. Um, he he didn't recover. It just uh, it's one of the side effects. You know, it can actually cause neuroinflammation, the brain inflammation. Yeah, because he had dementia already. That's it. It just sent him overboard. It, 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 that was the tipping point. And my dad was a zombie for a, a few weeks, and then he passed away. Anyway, she asked me beforehand, "Do you want him to have the third jab?" I said, what are you asking me for? You've given him two jabs. Just give him whatever everybody else is having. I, I'm saying, I was confused. I was thinking, why do I have a choice now when I didn't have a choice before? So I said, I, I, I don't know, I suppose. And so, so I kind of feel guilty because I said, do whatever you want to do. If I didn't, if I said no, then he, in theory, he might still be around. That fucks me up. It, just just thinking that, that they gave me the choice. This this woman gave me the choice, and I didn't know what to say. Anyway, um, yeah. So that like that lingers in my mind that 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 decision. But anyway, when my dad, he wasn't feeling well, you know, I can see that he wasn't eating and and so I went to see him in the evening. As I was leaving the place, I said bye to this uh, head carer. So as I was leaving, I was, you know, in, in the car park, she just opened the door and she, uh, the way she said it, you know, just like as if, um... Oh yeah, you 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 just forgot something. Or basically, she opened the door and she said, "Oh, uh, I'd like to say it's about Salvatore. It's a it's an end of life now. Yeah, it's end of life now. Yeah." And I said, "Oh, okay." And she closed the door. I thought, "What the fuck's wrong with this woman?" She just gave me some information, like basically. What does that mean? Uh, at the time, I thought, what does this mean? End of life. Like, it, obviously, it sounds bad. It's like my dad's going to pass away. 
soon or something. Nobody fucking explained to me what this means, end of life. It's as if, how the fuck am I supposed to know if no one tells me? No doctor told me. No carer told me. Nothing. The end of life process means when the, the body is breaking down, it's like it's going through the death process and they stop giving the person food. They stop giving the person liquids. I didn't know any of this. And she just like opened the door just as I left and she said, oh, just just like to tell you it's an end of life now. Yeah. And I, I was confused. I was a bit angry. I was, I didn't know what, what to think, you know. And, you know, maybe this woman doesn't know how to act, how to act in front of people, you know. She should have called me inside and said, um, I'm sorry, but uh, this is a situation. No, just in passing. Okay, so I went the next day. So, it, you know, I couldn't sleep that night. I thought, end of life, my dad is going to pass away. Yeah. I am dumb. I don't bloody know what it means. I kind of know what it means. Well, it's obvious what it means, but what... The way she just said it, it's just like... Oh, oh in the end of life. Yeah, okay, just, just to let you know. All right, okay. So I went the next day. I stayed with my dad, and then I realized, like, he doesn't have long to go. And one of the carers, one of the, like, the English carers, she says, well, sometimes it lasts for a month. Some people can live. So I thought, okay, here's my chance. I started praying. I started doing affirmations in front of with my dad. I was holding his hand and he was putting his hand in the air and stuff. He had his eyes open and stuff. And, you know, I felt sad because they didn't want to give him water. Because, you know, they don't give water. Because they speed up the dying process. If they give, if they Maybe if you give water, it slows down that dying process. I don't know. No one fucking told me. So I was there, like, panicking, saying, why don't you give my dad water? Oh, no, because we don't do it. Can't you fucking explain yourself? I mean, I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on with my dad. And you don't explain to me the situation. I don't know. I don't really think about the death process or the biological, the anatomy of death. Well, I, I don't know. I think about life. I haven't looked into that area. So, when my dad passed away, um, I, I was in the room with him, and he you can see in, inside his mouth he had the ulcers, and I thought, fuck this, I'm going to go and get water for him. So I went outside. As I went outside to call for that bloody carer, the head carer, uh, I called for her, and I, I said, look, my dad, you see, he needs water. When I came in, he already passed away. She said, oh, I'm sorry, he's he's dead. And I just froze, and I just lied down on my dad, and I tried to do, see, see you know, like, pump his uh, chest, and his body, his breath was, ah, it was coming out, but he passed away. Um, and then I just hugged my dad, and I cried. He had a white T-shirt on, and I filled his T-shirt full of my tears. And the bitch, you can only call, I don't give a fuck if, if this, if this, this video gets demonetized, the, the bitch with a capital B. She said to me, I didn't complain about this woman because I didn't have the strength. When my dad passed away, only now do I have a, a little bit of strength because I'm still in mourning for my father. But at that time, I was like destroyed. Um, I was crying and uh, she left she came back after about a few minutes and she said she tapped me on my hand I was still crying with my dad holding my dad I was like kneeling holding my dad and he, he was passed away and she said can I have the phone number of your daughter because I have to contact her I was thinking what the fuck's wrong with you woman I'm mourning my father I am the next of kin. Who the fuck is my daughter? Because what happened was my estranged daughter, my eldest, who lives in uh, London from another relationship, she must have said to her, when, when uh, my granddad passes away, you must tell me. 
or something like that. This stupid woman, like, I fucking pay. I pay every, every week, you know, you guys. I am the client. I am the next of kin. What are you tapping me on my shoulder and say I need your, the, her number? Even if I could give her... Even if I could give the number, this is a, a moment where my dad's just passed away. I don't give a shit about anything. Surely I will contact my daughter. Why do you have to contact her? <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, she tapped me on my shoulder. And I said, look, I, I don't know what her number is. Leave me alone. I said, please. And I, I, I went back to crying for my dad and she left. Uh, just before that, like after she told me, like uh, death, uh, sorry, uh, end of life. The the next day, I'm going back now. The next day, I was with my dad, and I was like sitting down with him and trying to spend as much time as possible. And she was talking to me. She was saying that, oh, uh, which part of Italy are, are you from? I said from Sicily. She says, have you been to Rome? I said, uh, yeah, when I was a kid. She said, well. What's it like there? Because I'm going to go on holiday soon with my son and my my husband. And she was fucking gathering information on for her holiday where my dad is fucking dying. And I'm sitting there. I was as polite as possible. And I said, yeah, it is really nice. What the fuck is wrong with this woman? Care of my fucking ass. I hate her. I'm sorry. I've never sworn so much because I hate that woman. I hate her. And she's still working there and looking after other people's loved ones. That's what gets to me. You don't know who's looking after your 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 loved ones. You don't know. And she had a husband there, one skinhead, like he looked like a butcher. And like he was whistling, he was going up and down the corridor whistling, la 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 and singing. I was crying there. And just after he, after, just fresh, my dad passed away. He said, be strong, man. Be strong. I thought, where the fuck are you? And then he he left whistling and, and uh, singing. La, 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 down the hall. My dad freshly fucking dead. What fucking respect do you have for, for human beings? Bastard. I didn't have a chance to get angry. I'm only angry now. At that time, I was absolutely, my dad is here. And the last few hours I have, I'm going to hold on to my dad and cry. Cry for my dad. Because that's the right thing to do. So, I was distraught. I called my wife and then she came. And uh, she also asked my wife, I need to know the number of his daughter because I have to contact her. So I was like really weak. And I, as I was leaving, I went to say goodbye to her because I'm still, still a bastard. I, I was taught by my parents to be polite. And as I went, I said, look, uh, I have to go now. I said, uh, the bitch, instead of saying sorry, she held a folder in her hands full of stuff. She dropped it on the, a desk and she went, Ah, another day over. Ah, oh, thank God that's, that day's over. And she smiled. If I had any fucking strength, I would have knocked her out. I, I just looked at her and I said, Bye. And I just turned and walked away. And... Like for months, I was like a zombie. I was crying. I was the S word. After four days, I was holding on to, you know, like tree hugging. I was holding on to the tree, crying for my dad. I was lying down in the, in the haystack, thinking about my dad. I remember a time. I remembered the time when we used to. My parents look used to look after a girl, a little girl. Her name is Cecilia. And my dad used to come back home from work, and she used to run to the door and said, "Daddy, daddy," and I used to run to the door, bloody jealous. I used to say, "Bye bye mio, daddy is mine." And I used to run in front of her. No, bye bye mio. I said, "No, no, bye bye mio." 
So my parents used to laugh about that. But in the haystack, I was just sobbing and I was saying, Papa mio, Papa mio, daddy, daddy mine, daddy's mine, or I don't know what the fuck it was. I just remembered those days and then there, I was just saying, daddy mine, daddy is mine, daddy is sobbing. And that's the time when I felt that word, the S word, after about four days. Well, anyway, yeah, I wish I had, I put a bloody, a, a spy camera in in the room to see what because there were times where his his shirt was blooded but i couldn't see how he cut himself yeah so that that the head carer didn't like her and uh you know as a christian you're supposed to forgive and forget it's difficult to forgive her when i just think about her you know, she thinks she can con people, but she can't con God, or whatever, her own conscience, wherever God is. So, she's got some demon waiting for her in hell to poke her eyes out with a bloody fork for eternity, or poke her ass or something. Yeah, so... You know, there, there's a friend of mine, not going through this, but... There are people everywhere that have got loved ones and care homes now. And although they don't say it, they know at the back of their mind, they don't know what's going on. They just hope that things are well. But suddenly the the person takes a fall. Did they fall because they were dizzy, because they have dementia? Or were they mistreated or, or what? And this does happen. So I suppose, I don't know, the, the experience I had with that woman is terrible. But I think the most important thing is, did she treat my dad right, you know? Yeah, I mean, if, if, she, treat, if she treated my dad right, okay, then, you know, I'm just talking about myself, you know, and how I felt after my dad passed away. Yeah, but uh, you know they they talk about you know there's a scale the heart uh, I forgot the word but there's a scale of things that that happen to you in life, and like divorce is one of them, uh, having really bad health or operation is another, death of a loved one, changing job or having a new career. I've had all of them in the, in the in the space of like two years. So my depression scale, I'm at A1. <laughs> I'm at the top level. Like my, I've never had problems, serious problems, but now I've got serious allergy problems. I can't eat anything. I can't, I'm always, I've got terrible like histamine reactions, but I've, I've got depression, anxiety. And I've got lots of things like GERD, acid reflux, I have to take medications for insomnia uh, lots of things but also like splitting up with my wife and divorce that's coming soon I'm going to lose my house that's coming soon I'm going to lose my family because i won't see them every day that's coming soon added stress now i have to look after the responsibility of all these dogs in a smaller place i'm gonna have much less money and i started this new career you know the youtube thing to, to make some money i lost my dad and, you know, my business failed after five, five years, you know. Are there any things on that bloody list that, <laughs> that I've missed out? Luckily, if I wasn't on antidepressants, I'd be on them now. Like, they'd, they'd be starting them, you know, they'd be starting me on them now, the, the doctors. <sighs> well, anyway, in the next video... I'll continue from this video, but about another subject, about something that maybe I shouldn't talk about, I don't know. Anyway, I'll speak to you guys in the next video. Uh, if this video has resonated with 
any of you, you know, do you have the same feelings about bloody carers? I mean, I think the carers there, the, the English uh, girls working there, I trusted them, no problem. It's just this, this Filipina woman. And there was another Filipina woman, maybe in her 50s or whatever, had such a fucking ugly face. When I say ugly, she was dis face distorted, all angry. Like, when you see her, she's all angry. So horrible. It's like, um, I don't know, like a headmistress just about to bloody cane you. I mean, it looked really horrible. Like, angry. And she was probably a friend, a friend of this... Uh, this witch yeah and I always thought Filipina people Filipinas are so lovely they're loving they're beautiful they're kind you know but not in this case in this case the you know these two Filipinas that I I used to see are horrible like witches so yeah I don't know maybe living here in the UK made, made them that way or uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they are they they are exceptions. Yeah, but that's the truth, you know. After my dad passed away, yeah, she just tapped me on my shoulder and she said, oh, "I need to have the number of your daughter." Like I was, she, my dad just passed away, just there and then. She knew that. She left me after two minutes because she tried the number and it was wrong. She tried phoning my daughter. It was wrong. She came back tapping me on my shoulder. No tact at all. Yeah, you know, and then afterwards she said, after a few hours, she said, I don't know why you're so so emotional. The English people here, they bring their their people, their, their, their family, and they're not like that. Well, I, I said, well, maybe I'm a Latin. You know, maybe I'm more hot. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. And then, as if to say that English people have got no heart, they don't cry for their 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 parents. <sighs> I couldn't say more. I'm not saying any, any, anything else. Yeah, another time, it was really hot, and I I purchased. They said we need a fan in your in the room for your father. So I went to the the, the place and I got a fan. And you would have thought they put it in his room, right? It was in his room when I left. When I went back to see him, because I went to see them, usually I would tell them, but then I didn't tell them anymore because the um, the restrictions were lifted for COVID. And so I went to see my dad. Where was the fan? They had it in the um, in the dining dining room area. And I said, I didn't ask any. I didn't ask them why. They just said, oh, we just took the fan because we don't have any. Anyway. Maybe. All right. I'll speak to you guys tomorrow and I'll maybe continue this discussion. This discussion. Not this discussion. I'll talk about something else that's connected shall we say you are so heartless and you don't care and i